Okay, this is video 9 on the grade 11 chapter on Newton's laws. And in this video, we're looking at the forces of a man in a lift. So in our notes, we've looked at the entire lift as a whole and said that there's a tension up and a weight down. But in this video, we're looking at what's going on inside the lift. And we're looking at the forces on a man standing on a scale. And that scale will give you a reading in Newton's. So it's a Newton scale. It's, uh, it's not your regular bathroom scale. So it's not going to give a reading in kilograms, but rather a reading in Newtons. Okay, so we've got a man of mass 70 kg standing on a scale in a lift. And we need to identify the forces acting on the various parts of this system here. So to get a reading on the scale, we the man pushes down on the scale. So that would be the force of the man on the scale. Well, according to Newton's third law, the scale exerts an equal and opposite force on the man. So if we draw that in there, the scale acts on the man. Same force up, same magnitude of force up, and we're going to call that force R. So we've got a man pushing down on the scale, the scale pushing back on the man, and those two forces will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So the harder the man pushes on the scale, the bigger that force becomes, and therefore the bigger the force upwards on him becomes. So it turns out that that reading on that scale is going to be this upward force. So he pushes hard down on the scale and then the scale returns that force upwards and that's the reading on the scale. So that's important to note that the upward force of the scale on the man is just the reading on the scale. So let's look at a free body diagram of the man and look at the forces acting on him alone. So he has a weight. The weight of the man acts downwards and we can calculate his weight. It's his mass times the gravitational acceleration. 70 times 9.8 gives you 686 newtons downwards. So that his weight is never going to change unless he moves to a different planet or moves above the surface of the earth. But at the moment he's on the surface of the earth He's in a lift and his weight, this is his actual weight, and that's not going to change. The man has the upward force of the scale acting on him, and that we said was going to be the reading on the scale. So if we look at different types of motions of the lift, so we're going to consider four different types of motions of this lift and how that affects the reading on the scale. So in this first scenario, the lift is either stationary, so it's at rest, or the lift could be moving up or down at constant velocity. So we've seen these types of motion before. Objects at rest or moving at constant velocity are not accelerating. So the acceleration is zero and therefore the net force acting on them is zero. Well, if we drew a free body diagram of that man in the lift now, we know that his gravitational force acts downwards. It's fixed at 686 newtons. And we also know that there's a force of there's a reading on the scale acting up on him, the force of the scale up on him. Those are the two forces acting on the man in the lift. And if that lift is stationary or moving upwards or downwards at constant velocity, then these two forces have to be balanced. And then the reading on the scale 
He looks down at the scale and he sees a reading of 686 newtons, which matches his actual weight. And that would be the reading on the scale, 686 newtons. So the net force here is zero because these two forces are balanced. And that's only true when the object's at rest. The lift is at rest or it's moving upwards or downwards at constant velocity. In these problems, we are going to take the upward direction as positive in all the, the problems that follow. So let's look at the second scenario. In this scenario, the lift is moving. It's moving upwards and it's speeding up. So this lift may start from the ground floor and start to speed up as it progresses upwards towards another floor. It's speeding up, so its velocity is changing, so it's accelerating. And let's suppose it's accelerating upwards at 2 meters per second squared. So let's go through that again. This lift is moving upwards, it's speeding upwards, so it's accelerating upwards at 2 meters per second squared. And we said that up we were going to choose up to be the positive direction in all our scenarios. Well, if it's if upwards is positive and it's accelerating up, speeding up, moving upwards, then its acceleration would be a positive 2 meters per second squared. So, that's the acceleration of the lift. Well, if we've got an acceleration then there must be a net force acting on it and according to Newton's second law the net force acts or the direction of the net force and the acceleration is the same so there must be a net force acting upwards on him and let's complete the free body diagram for that man so we know that his gravitational force is constant that's not going to change but we also know that there's this upward force of the scale on him, which is the reading on the scale. And we know that the net force must be upwards. So therefore, we've got to have a larger upward force of the scale on him. So in order to accelerate upwards, R must be greater than Fg. And we can now go and calculate the value of R based on the acceleration of the lift. So let's apply Newton's second law to that problem. On the left hand side here we've got the net force and because we took up to be positive we're going to write an expression of R minus Fg. R is up, Fg is down so the net force is R minus Fg and that's equal to the mass what mass? Well, it's the mass of the man. We're looking at the forces acting on the man, so we need to use the mass of the man. That's 70 kgs. And we know his acceleration to be plus 2 meters per second squared. Well, we're closer to finding an answer for R. We know Fg is a constant value, 686. And 70 times 2 is 140. So if we take that across and we get an answer for R, that's 686 plus 140. That gives you an answer of 826 newtons. So he looks down, while he's accelerating upwards, he looks down at the scale and he sees it doesn't match his actual weight. The reading on the scale is bigger than his actual weight. This is often called his apparent weight. So if you were in a lift that was accelerating upwards, you would feel heavier. because you're experiencing this upward force here that's bigger than your weight. 
Okay, so let's just go through this again. This lift is accelerating upwards. So if its acceleration is upwards, then the net force acting on it should be upwards. That makes R bigger than FG. And we can calculate R by applying Newton's second law. In all our problems, we're taking up to be positive, so the acceleration is positive too. The gravitational force doesn't change. And if we find R, we find it's bigger than the actual weight. So this person in the lift feels heavier as he accelerates upwards. Let's look at a third scenario. In this scenario, the lift is moving upwards. But this time it's slowing down. So you might be heading up towards the fifth floor, and as you approach the fifth floor, the lift starts to slow down. And you'll know from being in a lift that you feel a little bit lighter as that happens. And let's suppose that the acceleration of the lift is still has still has a value of two meters per second squared. But the, the important thing now is that he's slowing down. So that means the acceleration is in the opposite direction. He's moving up, but he's slowing down. So acceleration is opposite to his direction. So we, if we're taking up to be positive, then the acceleration has to be a negative value. Okay, so well, if the acceleration is directed downwards while he's moving upwards, then the net force must also be downwards. Going back to the free body diagram for him, we know we've got this constant gravitational force acting on him. And we also know that there's a force from the scale. Well, how big does this force have to be now? Well, it has to be smaller than the gravitational force. If we want the resultant force to be downwards, then R must be smaller than FG. In order to have a net force downwards. So let's apply Newton's second law and let's find the reading on that scale. Left hand side is the resultant force. We're taking up to be positive. So that's a positive R and that's a negative FG. So it's R minus fg still and that's mass times acceleration r is unknown we're trying to find that fg is a constant gravitational force the man's weight hasn't changed mass is 70 but this time he's accelerating downwards at two meters per second squared so that gives you r take that across 686 minus 140 and that gives you 544 so 46 546 newtons that's the magnitude of the reading on the scale so imagine you were standing on a scale and you're approaching the fifth floor the lift is slowing down and you look down at the scale it should read 686 but it doesn't it reads 546 this is your actual weight this is your apparent weight according to the scale and you feel lighter you feel lighter because the force of the scale upwards on you is smaller than your weight. Smaller than your actual weight. Let's look at a fourth scenario. Here we've got the lift moving downwards. So you might be coming from the, the second floor and approaching the ground floor and the, and the lift slows down and you feel a little bit heavier. That's because while you're moving downwards, you're slowing down, so your acceleration is upwards. 
opposite to your direction of motion. So if this lift is still accelerating at a value of 2 meters per second squared, then the acceleration in this case is upwards at 2 meters per second squared. Well, if the acceleration is upwards, then the net force acting on the man must still be upwards. Well, if we go to our free body diagram, we've still got our downward gravitational force that hasn't changed on the man. But we want the net force to be upwards, so R, the reading on the scale, has to be larger than the gravitational force. R must be greater than Fg to get a net force upwards. So the lift's moving downwards but slowing down and the, the net force on the man is upwards. So that reading on the scale should come out bigger than 686. So let's go and calculate that. And we've done a similar one already. Upwards is positive, so it's R minus Fg And that's 70 times, in this case, plus 2. So it's R, and we take 686 six across. And that gives us an answer that we got earlier. Of 826. So yes, while you're moving down and you're slowing down, your apparent weight is 600, sorry, 826 newtons. Your actual weight is only 686, so you feel heavier. So the question then is, when do you feel weightless? Well, the only reason why we feel our weight is because we're standing on the ground and the ground is pushing up on us. So if we're sitting on a chair, the chair is pushing up on us and we feel our weight. But suppose we removed the ground or we removed the chair, then we'd, free, we'd be in free fall. We'd fall, we would uh, accelerate downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared, but there's nothing pushing up on us so that there's no force acting up on us so that we feel our weight. So when the ground is removed, then we feel weightless. But does that mean that there's no gravitational force acting on us? The answer to that is no. There's always a gravitational force acting on us, but we're just not experiencing that upward force, that normal force from the ground that would allow us to feel our weight.